we're going to look at another two-gene Punnett square. In this case, both parents are homozygous for the dominant U, which stands for unattached earlobes. When we look at an unattached earlobe, we see this. You can see the one on the left has the bottom of the ear come up, and it produces a little dangle on the bottom of the ear, whereas the one on the right has the earlobe come down, and it attaches down in, and there is no little upcut for that dangle. They are also heterozygous for the dominant R, tongue roll gene. This is an interesting gene because it determines whether or not you are able to roll your tongue. If you can roll your tongue, it looks like the picture on the left of these two. If you can't roll your tongue, you might be able to make a little curve up, but it won't go any farther. And this basically is due to the lack of a certain muscle that is keyed by this gene. This gives us the genotype cap U, lowercase u, cap R, lowercase r. The phenotype you would have on this genotype is an unattached earlobe and they can roll their tongue. If we look at the cap U, lowercase u, cap R, lowercase r, the way the genes would pair up after meiosis is you could get the cap U pairing up with the cap R, which would allow the lowercase u to pair up with the lowercase r, or you could get the cap U pairing up with the lowercase r, which would have the lowercase u pair up with the cap R. Now, if we transfer these to the Punnett square, across the top we get cap U, cap R. Cap U, lowercase r, lowercase u, cap R, lowercase u, lowercase r. And since these are both heterozygous in the same way, you would get the same thing going down the columns. Then what we do is we add these together, and as I've said, always start with one characteristic, use the caps of it first, it doesn't matter which column the cap comes from, it's going to give you that particular characteristic. So this would be cap U, cap U. Then we add the next characteristic and always start with the capital letter, which would be cap R, followed by a cap R. In this particular case, we take the cap U from the top, followed by the lowercase u from the side, but the cap R from the side, followed by the lowercase u from the top. And by doing that, we always make sure that we have these in the right order, so they're easy to make sure we can check what we're doing and we don't get confused about this. In this case, I'm just going to fill in the others of these as we can look at how they fill out. Once we have got Punnett square done, we can see how the genes pair up, and we can begin looking at genotype. I have filled in the different genotypes here that I got out of the table. The first one is a cap U, cap U, cap R, cap R, and in that particular case, we've got one of those. If we look at the cap U, cap U, cap R, lowercase r, we have got two of those, and the cap U, cap U, lowercase r, lowercase r, we've got one. The cap U, lowercase u, cap R, cap R, we've got two. The cap U, lowercase u, cap R, lowercase r, we have got four. The cap U, lowercase u, lowercase r, lowercase r, we have got two. The lowercase u, lowercase u, cap R, cap R, we have got one. The lowercase u, lowercase u, cap R, lowercase r, we have got two. And then the lowercase u, lowercase u, lowercase r, lowercase r, we have got one. Now, all of these are very interesting because we get the different types of genotypes out of this. If we check our math, going across the top, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 2 is 12, plus 1 is 13, plus 2 is 15, plus 1 is 16. So our math checks out. We add 4 times 4 gives us 16 possibles. From there, we're going to look at phenotype, and phenotype is physical expression. Since this is a dominant gene, we look at a cap U being a dominant characteristic, so anything that has just one cap U is going to be a dominant. If it is one cap R, it is going to be a dominant. So I've taken the cap U's and I've coded them blue, and I've taken the cap R's and I've coded them purple. Now, you can look at the little table I've got here that the cap U's go across the top, cap U, cap U, go across the top, the cap U, lowercase u, are in the second row, and the lowercase u, lowercase u, are in the third row, the cap R's, cap R, cap R, is in the first column, the cap R, lowercase r, is in the second column, the lowercase r, lowercase r, is in the third column. So when we start looking at these, we're going to figure out what the phenotype is, which is the physical expression. We are going to start out in the upper 
left hand corner of this and it's got a cap U cap R. Since these are dominant traits, we know that the cap U stands for an unattached earlobe. The cap R stands for the ability to roll your tongue. So we count up all of those that have a cap U and a cap R, and you can see that in this area, we have got 1, 2, 2, 4, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 2 is 5, plus 4 is 9. Therefore, there are nine of these individuals that have that particular characteristic of the unattached earlobe and the ability to roll. Then we look at the next one, which is a cap U, lowercase r, lowercase r. And in this case, they've got an unattached earlobe, and they do not have the ability to roll their tongue. Well, these can be found in the third column in the upper two rows. And we've got a 1 and a 2. 1 plus 2 equals 3, and therefore this equals 3. The next characteristic is the attached earlobe, which means there's no cap U, but they have the cap R, which means they can roll their tongue. And again, this is found in the third line in the first two columns. There is 1 plus 2 gives us 3, and therefore we have a 3 here. And the last one is the double recessive, which has the attached earlobe and the inability to roll their tongue. And on this one, we only have the one. And since we have the one, that gives us a one over here. Now we go back and check our math always. Nine plus one is 10, plus three is 13, plus three is 16, which means it's checks. At this point, when I do this in class, what I do is I ask everybody to tell me how many is cap U cap R has an unattached earlobe and can roll their tongue. Then I ask for how many are unattached earlobe cannot roll their tongue, attached earlobe can roll their tongue, and attached earlobe and cannot roll their tongue. And then we take everybody and we divide up the number we got of each one, and we often see that it very closely resembles this 9331 ratio, which is very common in that particular case. So when we are dealing with a heterozygous cap U, lowercase u, cap R, lowercase r, and the traits are dominant, we get this particular format where we get a 9331 out of it. And it is a very useful sort of thing because you can do this in class. Everybody should have an earlobe and everybody can figure out whether or not they can roll their tongue.